Chairs No Waiting, episode number 467, John Masters is Batman. <laughs> Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Drop by over at Weavers and pick up some of the Mayberry postcard set. You can get six postcards with different images from around the Andrew Griffith Show to send to your friends and family. Another great thing you can have over there is the definitive Andy Griffith Show reference. It's a soft cover book that I know you would enjoy having. It's a great reference book, Andy Griffith Show reference. Or if you're ready for the trivia, head over and get the Mayberry Trivia Book from Scott Hopkins. All those things are over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Two Chairs No Wedding is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. Executive producer of tonight's show is Rascal Jones. Yay, Rascal. Rascal is the fellow who actually drew the logo for Two Chairs No Waiting, drew the Floyd picture. So that is Rascal Jones. So, Rascal, thank you so much for what you've done for the show. If you're watching on the video, he's right over my shoulder there. He drew a Floyd picture for me as well, hanging on the wall behind me. And Rascal did that. So he is the executive producer, the executive producer of episode number 467. Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, your host. I don't remember if I said that. It's great to be here in Mayberry with you. And tonight... Today, whenever you're listening to this, we're going to find out that John Masters is Batman. Now, you may not know that. Now, John Masters, Olin Soul, was the actor's name, his real name. We're going to hear about that. It was in a, uh, it was posted back in earlier in February of 2018 in a blog called, let me see if I can make sure I say this right, Tralfaz, Tralfaz. And we've talked about that before in a different episode, but uh, it's Tralfaz is what it's called. And he actually titled his article, Holy Scrony Guy, Batman, <laughs> talking about Olin's soul. But uh, he, he's uh, this fellow uh, finds all kinds of interesting things related to Hanna-Barbera cartoons. And just so happens, some of those things also relate to the Andy Griffith show. So Tralfaz went out and found this stuff and I wanted to share it with you because this is some really good stuff. Now, did you know, had somebody in the chat room just a few moments ago, tell me that they didn't know uh, that Batman or the Olin soul was the voice of Batman, the cartoons. Uh, but he was, he was, that's where this is coming from. So uh, let me let you hear this. This is from an old Batman and Robin, uh, Hannah, Hannah Barbera version of the, uh, Batman and Robin. This was actually, I believe, a Sesame Street episode. But let me just let you hear just a little bit of this. Hopefully, this is not going to get my show taken down. But uh, let me hear, let you hear some just a little bit of this. Try to stop me, dynamic. That's duo. the Joker. <laughs> Let's get him, Batman. Casey Kasem. Not here, Robin. We'll cross the street the right way at the corner. Remember? But and he'll get away. That was Olin Soul as Batman. I don't think so. Holy manhole. Casey Kasem is Robin. Actually, Robin, the Joker was lucky. Now he'll only spend some time in jail. If that car had been going a little faster, it could have finished him off forever. Always remember, Robin, no matter how much in a hurry you may be, always cross streets at the corner. Ah, uh, some great information there from Batman. Thank goodness he was available to be able to give us that information. <laughs> that is Olin Soul. That's right, John Masters himself. That's who that was as Batman. Now he did the Batman voice for years on some of those Hanna Barbera, the Super Friends, the Batman uh, anim uh, series that they had as well. So let's get into this article. I think you're going to enjoy it. Oh, and stick around because we have Randy Turner's this week in Mayberry history after this report. So you're just full of information tonight. So let's go and uh, check this out. So again, I have named it uh, <laughs> Holy Hymenal. Bat, uh, John Masters is Batman. Of course, that's not the real story. I'll have a link to the actual story's uh, title and everything on the show notes, so feel free. Here's the story. It says, how could Batman be played by a 59-year-old, 135-pound man? Well, quite easily, when Batman is an animated cartoon. So it was that Olin Soul became the Cape Crusader. At least his voice did. If you watched a lot of TV in the 60s, like I did, you would have recognized Soul's voice. He worked a lot, generally playing mild characters, though it seems to me 
that he was a bad guy in one of the early Perry Mason episodes. He even appeared on Adam West's Batman series as a TV newsreader, though I've found a news clippings that the two never worked on set together until he guest starred on The Big Valley. Soul's acting career began long before television. It was in Des Moines, Iowa. We know he moved there in, eight, in 1918 because at age nine, he penned this letter. Get this, he found a great letter here. He, he penned this letter to the editor of the children's section of the Des Moines Herald. Uh, what great research that has been done here. So let me, uh, <clears throat> let me read this to you. So he penned this letter. Dear Cousin Eleanor, I wish to join the Kitty Club. Enclosed, find six coupons for Kitty Club pin. I'm new in Des Moines, and so I hope some of the kitties will write to me. I've just been out of the hospital in Kirksville, Missouri for about four weeks. We just moved here from, Clark's, from Kirksville, Missouri. I hope my letter will be in print. I would like to uh, have my pen as soon as possible. I guess I will close Olin's soul. And it was 3519 University Avenue. And it just says city. So <laughs> is that not awesome? So he found this great, uh, uh, great letter that had been penned by him because we knew he was there in 18. 18- 19. Wow. Young Olin was musically inclined. He was play uh, he was playing second violin for the Des Moines YMCA Boys Orchestra in 1923 and joined the Boy Scouts that March. He began acting in September of 1925. He was studying dramatics under Miss Ida Heist Oberman and had been on a state tour with her. A month later, he was elected the treasurer of the Roosevelt High School Dramatic Guild. That led to a job later that month with the Princess Stock Company at Princess Theater in Des Moines, Iowa. The salary, $1 a show. (laughs) He was raking it in. $1 a show. Billboard followed his early career. He was in the Jack and Maud Brooks Stock Company in 1927, touring several Midwestern states, was a member of the Guilford Players the following year and spent 1929 as a member of the Lane Shanklin Stock Company, playing juveniles and drums and even writing a mystery play before playing with a road company in the East. Meanwhile, Soul and his classmates produced the first motion picture made by high school students in the U- U.S. Soul drew the title cards and acted as MC when Framed, that's the name of the movie, was shown before 2,000 people. However, Radio Belkind, he returned to Des Moines and found a job at KSO, then made his way in 1933 to WGN in Chicago a bustling hub for networks in the 1930s, especially when it came to soaps. Among the Chicago radio acting population, by the way, was Marvin Miller, who was also a superhero in the Flintstone cartoon series, uh, Aquam, or Filmation. He was in the film, Flintstones. I'm reading cartoons and things. The Filmation cartoon series, Aquaman. So he was a superhero in that. And Jane Webb, who later fought Soul's Batman as Catwoman in the animated versions. The list of radio shows he appeared on is insanely long. By 1935, he was starring in The Couple Next Door, narrating Grandstand Thrills, and had originated the role of Sam Ryder in Bachelor's Children. Yes, that one was a soap opera live from WGN Studio 2 and was appearing elsewhere. His best-known radio job was co-starring with Barbara Luddy uh, on the first Nighters uh, after Les Tremaine quit in March 1943 to go to Hollywood. Despite the opening, which proclaimed listeners were being transported to the little theater off Times Square. The show actually originated in the studios of WGN until October of 1947 when it moved to Columbia Square at 6121 Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. 
Television was growing in Los Angeles at the time, and television wouldn't provide leading man parts to the mousy soul. He was signed for a family comedy on KNBH in 1949, but it appears his first starring TV roles were local shows on KTT on KTTV, that's the name of the station, in 1950, the home magazine of the air and home shop show where, where Soul demonstrated how small power tools were used. That's what he did. That's awesome. His big break in television came in 1954 with a regular role on Captain Midnight and a recurring role on Dragnet. We saw him on Dragnet. Uh, lots of other appearances as a desk clerks and so on followed, but so made his money in commercials. And get this, guys. He was pulling in six figures by 1967. Six, according to the Los Angeles Times piece of that year. Can you believe that? Six, six figures he was pulling in from doing commercials in 1967. Uh, that had to have been a lot of money in 1967. Okay, so... We also know that he appeared on the Andy Griffith Show, which is not mentioned in this article, but is we know he was John Masters on the Andy Griffith Show several episodes. I should have looked up how many. We'll find that out because somebody will tell me. But uh, he was on John. He was a John Masters on the Andy Griffith Show. Okay, this brings us to filmation. Filmation version of Batman. So Soul was actually uh, interviewed about it. His uh, this this was published in the Niagara Falls Gazette. On July the 14th, 1968, and interestingly, the Times ran a story with some of these paragraphs almost word for word under a different byline about two weeks later. So here's the story. It's called Olin Soul, A Batman You'll Never Believe by Stan Mays. All right. There was a moment of indecision at Filmation recently. The company that produces animated films was without a voice for a superhero. Filmation is making a new Batman karmic strip for CBS TV this fall, starting September the 14th. It wasn't revealed where their filmation attempted to get the services of Adam West, who popularized the Long John's clad warrior on ABC TV the past couple of seasons. Anyway, just doing voiceover might damage his TV image. So, producer Norman Prescott put in a hurried call to Jack Wormser's agency, specialist in supplying commercial talent, and they sent over one of the best-known voices of radio's golden age. This is a quote from here, starting, quote, I heard it was an audition for what I thought might be a narration, end quote, said Soul, a veteran of over 7,000 shows in 25 years, quote, and I never dreamed I'd get the lead voice of Batman. I've only done voiceover for what they call soft sell spots in commercials, end quote. Adding to Soul's perplexed state is the incongruity of his new position. Soul is a man in his late 50s, completely devoid of physical characteristics found in the hero. Smallest of stature. He has never weighed more than 135 pounds and has always worn glasses. But a voice that can sound authoritative does wonders for the imagination. Quote, the closest thing I've ever had to playing a dramatic character before was when I did Coach Hardy in Jack Armstrong's show, Last Soul, who also revealed this is the first time in his 42 years in show business that he's done an animated show. The TV commercial field has proven to be a boom for the X-Radio commodity to sponsors and agencies desirous of getting their message across clearly and concisely in 30 to 60 seconds. Soul grinned, recalling that when he joined the Worcester agency about 10 years ago, quote, on some of those first interviews, a producer would hand me a script and ask if I wanted to go in the reception room and study it for a while. They were always dumbfounded when I asked how they wanted it read. Uh, then I'd do it right on the spot. The Batman Superman hour lasted one season. That This is going back into the regular article. That was the article from the paper. So we're back to the blog entry here. The Batman Superman hour lasted for one season, but Soul continued to pop up as a voice of the animated Batman throughout the early 80s. Soul had another interesting accomplishment. 
He created a TV show. Wow, there you go, folks. There's things you didn't, I never knew this. He came up with the idea of a series about a disabled veteran and took it to dra his dragnet boss, Jack Webb. Noah's Ark aired on NBC in the 1956 and 57 season. He was associate producer of the pilot, according to Variety at the time. His ancestors had come to North America on the Mayflower. Wow. But he told radio historian Chuck Shaden his name of Olin Everett Soul had nothing to do with that. His mother and father were worthy matron and worthy patron of a local chapter in the Order of the Eastern Star when he was born in 1909. His, his name was picked in order to give him the initials of O.E.S. Soul. So that's what it is. OES, the Order of the Eastern Star. OES, Seoul. Wow. That's where his name came from. Uh, it apparently joined the, uh, the Masonic sponsored Anderson chapter, uh, Order of Demali, as Broadcasting Magazine reported in June 16th, 1941, that he was the first radio actor to receive the Order's Legion of Honor. The second, incidentally, was another chap out of Chicago named Marvin Miller. Another note, Soul was a published author. A poem of his was published by the Des Moines Tribune on August the 22nd, 1921. Uh, can you say the same thing about any other Batman? So here's that poem. Here's the poem. Now, I am not good at reading poems, but Olin wrote this. He was, a, he was in elementary school. He was, uh, looks like he was in the seventh grade when he wrote it, but it's called this, A Boy's Trouble, Olin E. Soul. So here, here's the poem. A boy has pecks of troubles, even bushels, so they say. They shovel walks and dishes wash and never a cent of pay. He rocks the baby and soothes him when mother has gone to the club, and then he gets the dickens if he's not every second with bub. There's never a time in this world for play, and that's no kind of a joke. While Sis is taking in movie shows, he stays at home because he's broke, and he must earn enough money to buy him clothes to wear, while Sis simply goes to father. She has never a worry nor care. And the boys that carry papers in the early morn never get more than a wink of sleep. It's no wonder they look worn. And so many more troubles the boys have that I cannot name them all here. For if I should ever attempt it, I'd be writing this time next year. <laughs> Olin Soul passed away in Los Angeles on February the 5th 1994. Batman lives on. So that was 24 years ago, by the way. Batman lives on, not just quite the way Soul played him. Uh, just not quite the way that Soul played him. In fact, I'll bet that ridiculous bat suit that they use in the movies now weighs more than he did. <laughs> so folks, that is from the, uh, the website, the blog. It's called, as I said before, Trail Trails Trail Vass. Now, where that name came from, and I think I talked about this before, Trail Vass was the name of Astro, the dog on uh, the Jetsons. So when uh, he, they found out that his name, his, that was his real name. He had been lost, and his name was Trail Vass. So there, that's where the name comes from. So trailvaz.blogspot.com is the blog I brought this off of. There's all kinds of neat things there. If you'd like to go and check it out, there is a link in our show notes and you are more than welcome to go there. So I want to thank him for this great article. Great story about John Masters is Batman. That's right. And uh, the real name of the article, as I said, is Holy Scrony Guy Batman. Or as I named it, Holy Hymnal. John Masters is Batman. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Holy Hymnal. <clears throat> okay. Well, anyway, I think it's funny. 
Yeah, anyway. All right, so guys, it is time now for our report from our roving reporter, uh, Randy Turner. So, Randy, take it away. Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. The great character actor Dub Taylor was born on February the 26th, 1907 in Richmond, Virginia. His family moved to Georgia when he was five. Dub's actual first name was Walter. As a child, his friends in Georgia called him W as a nickname, and it eventually it evolved to simply Dub. He attended the University of Alabama, where he was a member of the Crimson Tide football team that played in the 1938 Rose Bowl. Dub stayed in California, hoping for a career in entertainment. He made his film debut that same year in Frank Capra's You Can't Take It With You. The part required an actor who could play the xylophone, a skill he actually had. He demonstrated his ability several times over his career, playing the instrument on various television shows, including The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. In 1939, in only his second film, he originated a character called Cannonball that he would play in some form in over 50 films over the next 10 years. In his first appearance, he was Cannonball, the sidekick of Wild Bill, played by cowboy star Bill Elliott. The pair made 13 westerns together. In 1942, Dub left Elliott and played Cannonball as the sidekick of Russell Lucky Hayden, then later took the character to another film series, this time starring Charles Stewart, who eventually became known as the Durango Kid. In 1947, Cannonball moved one more time as a sidekick to Jimmy Wakely, one of the last of the singing cowboys. Dub finally retired Cannonball in 1949, after he and Wakely had made 16 features in only two years. Dub did occasionally appear in films that weren't westerns, such as Frank Capra's Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and after he retired his Cannonball character, his roles were more varied, but he was still a staple in westerns throughout his long career. Dub's characters often wore the top halves of Long John's as a shirt, and frequently wore a bowler hat. In television, Dub's only regular series role was in the early children's show Casey Jones, playing Casey's fireman Wally Sims, with Casey played by Alan Hale Jr., later Big Jeff Pruitt in Mayberry, and the skipper in Gilligan's Island. Dub also had a small role in Andy Griffith's first comedy film, No Time for Sergeants, as McKinney, the draft board representative who came to get Will Stockdale at the beginning of the film. Dub appeared in the Andy Griffith show several times. He was first seen in episode three as Talbot, the postmaster who tried to swipe a wanted poster from the courthouse. Two seasons later, he was Billy Ray, the postman. It is possible this was the same character with his full name being Billy Ray Talbot, but it seems unlikely that the postmaster also worked delivering the mail. Later that same season, Dub was a circuit preacher who performed another wedding ceremony for Dud and Charlene Wash in an attempt to satisfy Ernest T. Bass, who didn't think Andy's marriage of the two counted, since Andy was not a preacher. Dub returned one final time during the last season as Ben Beecham, Emmett's overbearing brother-in-law, who tried to convince him to quit his fix-it shop and go into the insurance business. The year before his final Mayberry appearance, Dub memorably played Ivan Moss in the 1967 film Bonnie and Clyde. Dub's character was the father of the dim-witted C.W. Moss, who had gotten involved in the gangster's crime spree. Dub's character also arranged with Texas Ranger Frank Hamer to pretend to have a flat tire as part of an ambush to kill the gangsters. C.W. was played by Michael J. Pollard, Barney's cousin Virgil and Hamer was played by Denver Pyle, Briscoe Darling in The Andy Griffith Show. In later years, Dub appeared as the recurring character Houston Lamb in several episodes of Little House on the Prairie. He joined George Lindsay for six seasons of the syndicated Hee Haw, the rural version of Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, usually appearing in the Lulu's truck stop skits. 
and in 1990, toward the end of his career, Dub played Levi in Back to the Future Part 3. With more than 250 credits over more than five decades, Dub Taylor was an incredibly successful character actor, and certainly one Mayberry fans remember fondly. Dub passed away in 1994. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for listening, and remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. All right. Thank you, Randy, so much. Hey, if you don't want to miss any of Randy's reports, he does a report on Facebook every week. Uh, send an email to turnersgrade at gmail.com and make sure you don't miss out. So thank you again, Randy. Thank you very much. All right, folks. Hey, one thing he did not mention in there is uh, anybody that ever watched Gunsmoke, uh, all us Mayberry fans, you remember that, you know, on the radio, Doc was actually Howard McNear, Floyd, uh, and uh, the, may, uh, the mayor, Mayor Stoner, he was uh, Chester on Gunsmoke. He was the radio version. So, Dub Taylor was also the father of newly O'Brien from Gunsmoke. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, they were talking about it in the chat room as well. But I wanted to make sure I pointed that out for you. Hey, there's all kinds of stuff always. Gunsmoke, Buck Taylor. He is the son of Dub Taylor. He played newly O'Brien on Gunsmoke. Boom! Man, guys, you have learned so much tonight. I feel like Mr. Rogers or something, telling, teaching, <laughs> teaching all kinds of great Mayberry information to folks who just didn't know. There's so many things I tell. I was telling the uh, chat room before the show started. There's so many things that I know that uh, that I think is just common knowledge that uh, you know I've realized over over time that I just know a bunch of weird stuff. <laughs> it's what it is. So you guys may not have known that. So I just wanted to throw that in. And thank you, Randy. Thank you, uh, Trelvaz, for your great uh, story there on uh, Batman. That you guys may have not known that either. But folks, hey, you keep showing up here in Mayberry, and I'll keep trying to find things you don't know that I can tell you about. Folks, I would love to hear from you guys. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415. Let me know what you thought. If there's some great trivia that you know, let me know. Uh, you can also email me at floyd at imayberry.com. If you'd like to support this show, head over to patreon.com slash two chairs and you can donate to the show and help me keep this thing going because it costs me money that's right uh, we have several patrons I want to thank all of them and if you'd like to be one I would be eternally grateful folks until next time I'll see you here on Mayberry the music's getting loud so I have time to go <laughs> I'll see y'all later have a great week <laughs>